and find your next thermal. Use that altitude to your advantage and that time to your advantage and scout. Just scout. All the time scouting. So um, a good third of your time on a good day is probably spent preparing for the next flight. Um, and, and these are all things you know we can practice on Saturday. Um, for those of you, half of you who, who aren't flying in hand launch, there I really, really encourage people to play in hand launch. And I, I really don't care what airplane you're flying. Uh, I almost don't care if you're flying a fling, but that, that thing's pretty heavy. It's, it, it's not going to teach you as much. There's planes under $100, you know, if you want to get in started cheap. Uh, DL-50 from Mountain Models. Uh, Gambler from uh, uh, Wright Brothers RC. And uh, then there's another one, uh, Quick, Quick Look 2. Quiet Flight? Yeah, Quick Look 2, I think it is. And, it, and it's out of Australia. It comes in and out of being available. And then there's this beautiful one if you want to spend, you know, like 150 or something like that called Apogee Sport. Whenever he has kits, you can always ha uh, harass Jeb online on the RC groups, Jose, see if you can get that. Because that's the best airplane out there in that size. Um, Denny Mays, most of you probably know about. Um, uh, uh, what's Polcat Arrow? Um, if he can get his scene back together, he had a 299 airplane that was really good. And there's an airplane called Predator out of Taiwan, and uh, you know, I really don't like what they're doing as a, as a U.S. manufacturer, but it's a good airplane. It'd be a great starter airplane. Uh, I don't like what they're doing because I think they're undercutting the market. They're just goofing up, messing up, and they're going to go out of business, and then you know, no one will have a, a low-end airplane. But it's 200 bucks. So if you can get one of those, get it. <laughs> it uh, I would. Um, the, in the medium area, I would say maybe that's where building starts, where you know you get a vacuum bagging system. But that's trading dollars for time, or time for dollars, excuse me, and uh, a lot of time. So you do that if you want to build. Like, you know, Dennis, me, we, we like building. You know, if I wasn't selling airplanes, I'd still be building airplanes. And that, in, in a, if, you, if you get into hand launch, you're really into it, uh, well, that would be an inexpensive way of doing it. And then, of course, if you don't care about money, you just want to get a top-end airplane, there are actually a bunch out there right now. Our only problem is top-end airplanes are always have a big waiting list. So right now, we're the fastest, and if someone orders today, it's end of July before we ship. And uh, in the worst case scenarios, it's over a year. Uh, there's some airplanes that take over a year right now to get. Um, not that they sell more airplanes than we do. They don't. They just have less capacity. Um, I'm actually, I'd like by the end of the year to have stuff on the shelf, which would be just lovely. Uh, our kind of airplane, you know, it's not 300 bucks. It's over 500. That's the ARF kit. You know, people who have us make their airplane, it's $1,100 easy. Uh, by the time they have us do, you know, because they always want RDS and rotary drive systems installed and, and fancy paint and stuff like that. So uh, you can play anywhere in that range, you know, um, anywhere from 100 bucks and, and like a DL-50 is just foam and you shape it with sandpaper and you glue on the carbon and you uh, use, what, polyurethane is it? Mm -hmm. Anybody build one? Yeah. Yeah, polyurethane and you put the, the uh, put fiberglass on. Mm -hmm. Or, or is it still ripstop? No, it's not. <coughs> it's fiber it's Very cool airplane. Very tough. Very durable. Oh, have a ton of fun. Doesn't have flaps or anything, right? It's just right. two channel. Elevator runner. Uh, but the, oh, launch is you launch 100 feet. If you if you get any sort of launch going, it can get that high. So th there's cheaper ways to get in as well. And um, if I, I guess I'm aware of everything pretty much that's out there right now, and. Um, uh, there are hollow molded aircraft that are also very, very, very good. Um, I would suggest you uh, make sure you get all your mistakes out of the way with a cheaper, you know, more durable aircraft before you, you know, get one of those because they don't forgive very readily things like mid airs and, and tip strikes. They just, they're dead. Um, but beautiful airplanes, Sirius out of Sweden and uh, Saltpeter out of Germany. There's just a lot of neat stuff going on in Europe. Um, I, I noticed this thing, I'd hear a lot of this when, when we'd have a windy day, 
and oh, it's hand launch. We don't want to fly in the wind. <clears throat> and I, I want to uh, encourage everybody to reconsider that. If you can fly in wind with hand launch, and you can range away into lift, and you can get back in wind, then you can do it with any size RC soaring aircraft, what have you. And this is something that everybody probably should know, but I'll just say it. You know, you don't really know what's upwind unless some birds are in it. You don't know what's there, but you know what's past you. You always know when the thermals have passed you. So, eight out of ten launches, nine out of ten launches at a contest, they go downwind. They don't, they don't push upwind. You know, maybe I'll find some lift. They know where the lift is. And, and the trick is, how do you get down and come back? Well, flying in wind helps you develop that ability. And you learn how to set up your airplane, too. You learn to make ballast for your airplane so you can you know, increase the wing loading, increase the airspeed. <coughs> um, and I guess that brings to another topic. How many people know what I mean by vector air reading? Uh, I know some people know, <laughs> even if they don't know it by that name. <coughs> um, when the wind's blowing one way, then it changes. And no, actually, if we have a wind direction going prevailing like this, and you're on the field right here, ready to launch with your airplane, and uh, the wind changes and starts blowing this way, where's the thermal? It's not here. It's here. The only time it's going to be here is when it's light and variable and there's almost no, no group, you know, wind, prevailing wind at all. Then, wherever the, wherever the air is blowing, that's the rising column of air that's requiring more air to feed it. And, you know, then you find the thermal at, at, at the end of that heading. But what is a magnificent skill for all of soaring, and hand launch teaches you really well, is how to take this plus this to equal that, or that, or that. And you learn by, by practice more than anything else, based on the wind speed and the strength of the thermal and how long this, this lasts, where this is. If, um, in a, how many people have read uh, old, the buzzard, what was, what was the name of it? Yeah, Thornburg. Thornburg. Thornburg's book. Mm -hmm. But who hasn't read it? He talks about the river of air and how things move, and it's really good. Um, th this, um, this thing will happen where thermal will be here, prevailing wind will be here, and you'll be seeing all kinds of reeds, maybe even up against the prevailing. And when, when it changes really fast, the thermal's in close. It's close to you, and it's going by you. It's moving. So it may, maybe it's starting here, it's moving with the prevailing breeze, and it reverses and makes the air still. Even though it's 15 mile an hour a day, it's still, right? Well, that means the thermal's upwind. And then as, as the, the, the vector starts changing, the, the wind will always be, uh, the air will always be biased towards the prevailing. You know that that thermal is there, and hand launch teaches that. It's just it's the coolest, coolest, easiest place to learn that. Um, so let's say that uh, you, know, you accept the, the, the challenge and you say, OK, I run the set, go launch and follow things downwind. And you go do it. And now you are here, and your airplane is way the heck out here. And the, you, know, you follow the thermal this way. Which way do you come back? And uh, this was the last thing I wanted to you know, talk about today. If you come back down this line, you probably won't get back to the field. And this was a hard lesson for me to learn. I was, I was making mistakes with this as recently as uh, 06, 07. Um, if you come back down this line, the thermal's gone here. It scoured all the hot air, sucked it all up. And you feel that cold breeze now, right? It's now the air's cold and everything's being drawn here. All there is from here to here is trash and sink. So the best way to get back, the most, the best chance you have, is to follow an eccentric path. Don't, don't 